Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and in this video I want to go through what I do to tune my GPU, specifically for cryptocurrency mining. And there's a lot of information and data out there that can be provided to you or that you can find to help you identify what core, what memory clock, what TDP, what voltage, all that stuff online. But I want to make sure you understand that every GPU is going to perform differently than the other. Now, you may get close to the settings I provide you, but maybe not exactly. Bitsby Trippin has a lot of data. I have a lot of data. Red Panda Mining. Many in the crypto community provide data to you guys, but you may not be able to get the exact mega hash at the exact wattage. You may even get better mega hash than what we were able to do at a less power draw. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. There's a bunch of resources out there. One of them is whattomine.com, right, where it has a bunch of GPUs. Unfortunately, if your GPU or uh, is not listed, is outdated, unfortunately, it's probably not going to be profitable to mine on that. You could still mine on it uh, because you believe in the project or cryptocurrency, but it's these are pretty much the top circulated GPUs that people are utilizing to mine with. Uh, and when you select a GPU, like I selected a 1070, if I mouse over it, you can see there's some information in that, right? So it's saying using plus 500, uh, 150 on the core, plus 500 on the mem, and then se setting the TDP or power limit to 75%. What is that? Well, from an NVIDIA perspective, what that is is because AMD and NVIDIA tune differently, but the the what I want to share with you is, is, this, is the same, the mindset. So on here in my NVIDIA system, the TDP is the power, this right here, right? So if they say TDP is power limit, and then you see the percentage right here, you can see that I have it set to 70%. Uh, my 3080 is at minus 200. My memory is at plus uh, 1150. But some people are saying, well, plus minus 200 isn't working for me on the core, so I'm doing plus or, or minus 500 instead. And that's understandable. Each GPU is different. More importantly, what I want to share with you in the story is, is I had two 1070s, uh, two Zotac 10, uh, 1070 minis. And physically, the difference that I can tell between the two was either the manufacturing process change, the materials change, or they were manufactured at two different locations. And the way I could tell that is the heat pipes and the design of the heat pipes were two different things. Additionally, what I could tell not, you know, by looking at it, but by mining on it, was that both GPUs at the same core clock, memory clock, uh, power limit or TDP, whatever you want to call it, one would always perform lesser than the others, unfortunately. So you're not always going to get the same results, even if you have the exact same GPU. Um, if you happen to get it from the exact same batch in bulk, then maybe, but nine times out of 10, uh, even if it's the same model and make, it may perform differently than the others. And we've seen that time and time again. But as far as getting data, you're asking, hey, what core clocks, what memory, what power limit should I use on this GPU? I can't give you any, every exact answer. So I would check out whattomine.com as, as a base or a similar mining calculator. See what they're using, right? Core clock, memory clock, TP. And you can see that the algorithms down here, what the hash rate is, right? So it's saying the 1070, at least with what they use in settings, was getting 26 mega hash and 140 watts. But if we go to Google and type in literally the name of your GPU, GTX 1070 mining performance, you can see that they did some testing. And this is a website called bitnan.com. Now, this isn't going to be the same website you go to every time, but this is just an example. If we Google search this, this website, nice hash, and a number of others, come up and they provide data of the hash rate that they're able to hit. But what you're looking for is not just the hash rate, but the hash rate, the power draw, the core clock, the memory clock. You want all of that data to help you identify where you should be sitting or where would be a good spot to sit. And you can see their stock out of the box performance versus their optimized performance. So stock 26 mega hash at 160 watts. And then overclock and optimize 31.5 mega hash at 120 watts. So with that data in there, uh, or in your mind, now it's time to tune. Well, how do you do that? There's a number of different software applications available to you. For example, MSI Afterburner um, is available or you can tune your AMD GPUs and your NVIDIA GPUs. Now, not all GPUs are compatible like the 6000 series. If you go to download Afterburner from the stable uh, version on their website, 
it won't work with the 6000 series. Like my 6800 would not show up in MSI Afterburner. So I had to come to Guru 3D, which is a trusted source, and download the 4.63 Beta 5 in order to actually be able to tune my RX 6800. And once you have the application installed and, and up and running, um, you can start tuning. But there's other applications available to you. So MSI Afterburner is one. EVGA Precision X1 is actually only for NVIDIA, but it is a GPU tuning utility that you can use. And additionally, there's Overdriven Tool, which is primarily for like older GPUs. It can still be utilized. I think the highest version that's outdated is like 0 0.28 or something like that. Uh, there's, there may be a latest one for the 6800 series, but as of right now, there's not. If you go to open it up right now with the 6800 in this system, it, would, it can't read it. It can't detect the GPU. And then on the NVIDIA side, is the NVIDIA Inspector uh, and both the Overdriven to NVIDIA Inspector are simplistic GUIs or graphic user interfaces that may use a little bit less resources than a GUI like MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision. Not much in today's technology or at least in today's hardware uh, but a little bit more. I do like using Radeon software like the the built-in driver tuning uh, the built-in software for AMD I'm sorry uh, compared to MSI, at least with the 6000 series. But the thing I like about it is either way you tune, you can save profiles. So if we come here to the Radeon software, I can go ahead and turn on GPU tuning, and I like to look for advanced control and turn that on so I can see the actual clocks. If you look down here, you know, it only shows like 100, 100. I want to see the actual clocks and voltage. Same thing with fan tuning. Uh, with fan tuning, on my, when it comes to mining, what I would recommend is set an aggressive fan curve at least a little bit more aggressive on the Radeon tool uh, it will be in here under if you go to if you come into the home page you go to performance then you go to tuning manual turn on everything and you'll be able to test and tune from there uh, on MSI afterburner it's a little bit different uh, you would have to uh, adjust accordingly like right here if I click on the numbers I can jump up the the core clock I can jump up the memory I can set the power limit high for AMD, at least on the 6000 series. Don't even bother with that. If you're gaming, boost that all the way up. Um, and then I can adjust the core voltage. Now, typically, right off rip, core voltage is not available. So you're going to have to go to the cog wheel here and check unlock voltage control and then hit apply. But also, you have the fan control here. And under fan, we can enable user to find one and set a more aggressive fan curve. Now, this is important because... Uh, your GPU will heat up, especially the memory, especially now with, with high-end GPUs on the 6000 series and 3000 series, the memory, the GDDR6 and 6X are getting really, really warm, and you want to set an aggressive fan curve uh, to try to keep those temperatures nice and cool. Uh, but you would set your core clock, memory clock, and whatever your favorite utility is, and then apply. Now, on AMD Radeon software, on the 6000 series specifically, not on other cards, but on the 6000 series specifically, there's a section here called memory timing. You want to make sure to turn that on to fast timing. That will get you an increased uh, bump in hash rate compared to default timing. So just be mindful of that because MSI Afterburner doesn't have any access to that feature. So uh, once you have everything set up, you can actually hit the check mark down here and then hit control and then a number one through five to save that profile and I like to save different profiles for different algos I might have a overclock for gaming I might have an overclock for ethereum mining I might have an overclock for uh, you know grin or kapow whatever um, setting those profiles pretty easy in MSI afterburner and then for AMD Radeon utility uh, you're gonna click the three dots and then hit save and you can see I got some profiles already set here. ETH best for the Ethereum mining stock with power limit. That's to, for gaming, you know, max power limit. And then all out for some serious overclocking and, and benchmarking. Uh, but the software is very easy to use. Um, it's just a matter of identifying first, okay, I have this GPU. Where, does, where are other people hitting? What is the hash rate they're getting? What is the power draw they're getting? Then identifying where you can go and test and tune. To test and tune... What I would recommend is, you know, while you have your mining software up, you know, you got your Radeon software or MSI Afterburner, whatever it may be that you're using to tune your GPU, you have that up and going. Set the clocks close to what you, what other people are providing to you um, and see where it sits. But you might be able to get even more hash rate or even more performance than they can 
depending on the silicon lottery. You may have won the lottery and got a really good GPU. You may have not and got a meh GPU. But hardware info is very important to have up because we need to keep an eye on the, G the GPU temperatures, the memory temperatures, and the VRM temperatures. Right now, honestly, if you're a beginner and this is becoming too much, just focus on getting hardware info up and keeping an eye on your memory temperatures. The good thing with the 6800 that's in this system is that MSI added thermal pads to the back side of it. However, on the 3000 series, they didn't. And if I get out of your way here, we're right now looking at my 3080, even though I have another G number of GPUs in here. Uh, and if you look in this particular chart, our core clock hit a max of 79, while right now it's at 48. And then our memory hit 108C, which is really bad. I want you to know that. Uh, T-junction of GDDR6 and 6X is 110. If you're hitting that high or close to that high, you're going to thermal throttle your memory and you're going to lose hash rate. So you want to keep that down. And I did a whole series on the problems that we had with the 3000 series and what I did to fix it. So check that out. But what happened to cause these temperatures to do this is at some point in time, I had a blue screen of death or the drivers crashed. And when it reset, it removed my overclock, my aggressive fan curve and everything. That's why I like to save profiles. And I have it set up to where my system reboots, it will automatically apply, you know, profile one, two, three, whatever I have set, it will automatically apply it on reboot. And I really like that feature because sometimes it, if, if the driver crashes and you, it's just sitting there mining for hours and hours at stock power draw, you're wasting money right because you're paying more money for electricity and there's a risk of pulling too much power through whatever cables you have um, I will have more data as the channel grows on various GPUs I did it on the 6800 series on reddit so if you can't find it on what to mine because what to mine doesn't have the 6800 series yet uh, when they get their own card they'll do some testing and compare against the data I sent them but I also have the 3060 Ti, I have the 2080. There's a number of GPUs that I've provided data to the community about. And you can come here, look at each algo, the clocks I got, the memory uh, uh, set, the power limit, the voltage, all that, and see where your GPU sits. But don't start off RIP. If you like to, I'd like to uh, advise you on a program that, yeah, it's used for gaming, but it can technically be used for mining as well. Uh, in mining, yeah, we're undervolting and everything, but I want you to check this out. So hard, uh, not hardware info, but uh, Unigen Heaven is a good program I like to use. And you're supposed to use this for like overclocking and getting the best overclock settings. But I like to use this to identify some weak spots, specifically in memory tuning. So core clock, nine times out of ten, you're going to be dropping down the core clock on your NVIDIA uh, or excuse me, your AMD GPU. Maybe NVIDIA you might do like plus 150, plus 200, plus 50, leave it at zero, whatever. Uh, but for AMD, you're gonna drop the core clock down. So if you drop the core clock down to say 2050 instead of 2239, you apply and you look at Unigen Heaven. You let it run for a few minutes, see if everything's okay, stable, all right, cool. Then you start dropping the voltage, and that's where things start to get uh, a little bit sketchy. If I drop to 800 right now, I guarantee you I would crash because I'm trying to record this video on the same system. But stock, you're at 1025. So say you might go from 1025 to 1000 millivolts, or one, one volt, or 1000 millivolts. That's what it means. And if I hit apply, it will apply that. And if it winds up crashing, then that means you're undervolting too far. So if a thousand holds up, then you might go, let's say, let's do 980. And I like to use even numbers if possible, but you can do it in increments, not on the voltage. On the voltage, you might do increments of 20, 10, 5. But on the core, you can do increments of plus 50, plus 100, uh, excuse me, plus 50, plus 25, plus 20, plus 10, plus 5. You just want to get that depth just extra mega hash right because if you go too far like on the 3000 series where you overclock the memory too high you can wind up getting diminishing returns and actually negating some of the hash rate you should be getting so just be mindful of that but on the memory and the core i like to do increments of 50 25 20 10 5 and 5 comes up when i'm getting really close if i went too far my system crashes this unigen heaven benchmark crashes for whatever reason uh, then I back it out and do smaller increments. On the memory clock, the reason I like to use Unigen Heaven is if the memory clock is too high, you will start to see what's called artifacting. 
uh, whereas these little starbursts, uh, you might get like a little bit of green, a little bit of pink, a little bit of clear. It's just these little starbursts, little specks that start to pop up on the screen. That means your memory clock is too hot. And with the 6800 series, unfortunately, we can't control the memory voltage. We can only control the memory clocks. So you just got to be mindful of that. And each GPU is different. So just understand the data is out there somewhere. If not from me, from somebody out there in the community. Uh, you get your data, you figure out where they're sitting at, at work core clock, memory clock, power limit or voltage, and then what's the mega hash they're getting compared against the power draw. And then you just come to the tuning utility and you tune. You mine for a little bit, let it run for 15, 20, 30 minutes, see how it sits, and then drop down maybe the voltage a little bit, then drop down the core a little bit and see how that sits and, and then bump up the memory and so on and so forth. But that's how I tune my GPUs. Even new GPUs that I get in hand, I, I just sit there and I tune. I find out where the limits are, how far we can bring the voltage down. If I get a crash system reboots, no problem. Now I will say one tip if you're using MSI Afterburner is to not have automatically apply uh, the clocks as soon as you reboot because if you apply a bad clock and your system uh, reboots and applies the same clock again you could get stuck so I would be very careful of that until you find a sweet spot uh, you know where your GPU likes to sit don't don't put it on you know apply on boot basically so I hope you got some useful information out of this video guys I really appreciate you taking the time to stop by and, and, and uh, check it out hit me up in the comments let me know what you're mining what you're doing uh, how do you tune your GPUs? Share share with the community down in the comments below. If I don't read it, somebody who watches this video may. Uh, but definitely hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.